Okay, so today is Thursday, you guys, and this is my last day of the week. Um, and so on my schedule today, I'll be doing a discovery call. Um, I'll be meeting with a client, and then I'm doing this video. So, and that is it. And then I get a three-day weekend. And the thing is that we are in a society where overworking is cute. Um, it literally is almost like an equivalent to driving, you know, a really nice car or, you know, um, uh, having the most expensive handbag. It literally is like an accessory. So if you overwork, um, you know, it's like you're, you're doing it, right? You're, you are being successful at whatever it is that you're doing. And in the child care business industry, when we are overworking in our center or preschool program, um, it kind of symbolizes that we are actually offering quality care. So a lot of times, if you are not working those kind of hours in your program, um, you know, it's kind of looked at that, you know, you're not providing quality care. But it is not okay for you to be overworking yourself, providing quality care for children and families while you are suffering from lack of nutrition and just overall mental health care. So according to an article published by NPR, I'm going to actually read this, but it's basically the actual heading of the article um, stated that overwork killed more than 745,000 people in a year who study finds. It says, um, it continues to state that working long hours poses an occupational health risk that kills hundreds of thousands of people each year. And this is coming from the World Health Organization. People working, y'all listen to this, people working 55 or more hours each week face an estimated 35% higher risk of a stroke and 17% higher risk of dying from heart disease um, compared to people following the widely accepted standard of working 35 to 40 hours in a week, the WHO says in a study that was published um, in the Journal of Environmental International. So, and somebody states here from uh, one of the directors, no job is worth the risk of a stroke or heart disease. And it's just like, you know, I just, I, 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 I cannot live that kind of lifestyle. So how do we transition ourselves from this kind of a lifestyle? Because it is a lifestyle that we live. It's a, it's, a, it's a culture that we're in and it is a lifestyle. And so for me, I want to kind of share a, my story um, into how I basically put a, um, put a flag, so to speak, or put a stake in the ground to say, I can't do that. And that was when we struggled with infertility. Um, so for those of you that are new here, you may not know, but we struggled with infertility. It took us six years to have Nova. Um, and a lot of this, I think, was due to overworking myself in my center. So that is when I intentionally started to study work-life balance, time management, scheduling, you know, and just those kind of a topics. And that led me into being able to work a 20 to 25 hour work week um, and do a four hour work day. And today I want to share with you how I actually execute, how I plan and actually execute that type of a schedule and um, what I did at my child care business, you know, to be able to do that. So you're going to get to really learn about how I actually do all these things um, because I do have a busy schedule, you guys, you know, there's a lot. Even now, as I sit here and talk to you, I am feeling even like overwhelmed about some of the things that we have going on. We're trying to have another baby. We are in the process of getting started with building our home. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on. But I will say this, that I am very proud of myself with what I have done when it comes to my working hours. And it's something that I love and, and really um, am passionate about helping you guys as child care business owners be able to do the same. Okay, so if you are new here, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley Benz of AshleyBenz.com and Child Care Business Executive Tools, where I help you start automate or expand your early childhood education business with a specialty in child care business automation and i do all those things over at ashleybenz.com so if you have if you love that kind of content if you're interested in starting automating or expanding your child care business then be sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you can get more content just like this and so oh and before we do that let's go ahead and take a sip because we're going to talk about mindset because it's really important um, and I really think this is just kind of where a lot of people fail at being able to have a great work-life balance is the mindset. So let's go ahead and take a sip. Uh, go ahead and grab you something sip on you guys and let's continue this video. So my 
mindset is really, really going to drive your working hours. It's going to dictate how many hours that you work. And um, it is also going to dictate your just your overall belief system of overworking. And so I want to kind of talk about three type of mindset shifts that you are going to have to have if you want to be able to work, um, you know, 20 to 25 hours uh, less a week. So the first mindset shift is that there is no such thing as balance. You know, something's always going to have to give, something always has to sacrifice, and there's no such thing as balance. And I am here to tell you that there is such thing as balance, okay? There is such a thing as balance. And for me, what 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 I have learned is that, you know, there is a time and place for everything. And when I ensure that there's a time and place for everything, then I can ensure balance. And so that you guys, um, for anybody that's new here, but I am a preacher's daughter. And so some of the things that you're going to hear is going to come from my favorite book. And um, there is a scripture that talks about that, that, you know, there is a time and place for everything. So just like I remember working in the classroom with the kids, we would always say when it was time to clean up, you know, put everything in its home because everything has a place. And that is exactly, I feel like for me, that is one of the things that has really helped me with, you know, being able to have this kind of a lifestyle and not overworking myself. Another thing that really helps me too is that all things are done decently and in order, okay? And so when we kind of put those two pieces of wisdom together, when I say, okay, there's a time and place for everything, everything's done decently and in order, then that automatically, by default, teaches me that overworking is um, not okay. And that there is a way that I can do things so that I'm not overworking. There is no such thing as balance. It's definitely a mindset shift that you're going to have to change if you want to be able to have, um, you know, not be overworking yourself and not be having to work the 50 plus hours a week. Mindset shift number two is that I cannot leave my center, my school. There's no way they're going to be able to run it without me. I just can't do it, okay? That is something that you're going to have to change. Your mindset is going to have to change um, if you want to stop overworking yourself in your center or school or whatever, your home, daycare, whatever that you have, okay? Because here is the thing about it. You can run your school program, home daycare can run without you. This is what really helped me. So the time that I used to leave my center would be at 3.30. So I would come in at around 9.00. And I would work from 9 to 3.30. So I think at that time I was working like a 30-hour week. I don't know what that calculates out to be. Whatever, 9 to 3.30, that was my time frame. And I just always re would remind myself that at 3.30, we would close at 5.30. So I would always say, okay, Ashley, if you cannot have people to be able to just keep the kids safe, <laughs> you know, make sure they're communicating with the families in the afternoon, and literally, yes, babysit, from 3.30 to 5.30, then you've got a problem. You know, the way that we ran, I ran my center was that we did all the educational things in the mornings. That's when my lead teachers were there, you know, and things like that. So when 3.30 hit, most of all of us left. So my lead teachers would get off. I'm getting off. Um, and then, of course, I would have like an assistant director there. And there were times even before I had an assistant director or a director that there was nobody there. So, but I had to just say, okay, right now, all I need is babysitters, right? Like if I could just get somebody that could that literally is just good at babysitting, I'm cool with that. Make sure the parents are good. Just make sure these kids are safe. They're not going to die, okay? <laughs> and I was good. And so I think that really just kind of helped change my mindset about it and just being able to leave my center. Besides even that, I mean, obviously, you know, I put in automations. I put in things that ran in the background. I made sure that I was hiring the right people, um, you know, and just, you know, of course, there's all those other layers to it, but that really just helped me. So maybe that helps you too, just to say, hey, they can just babysit, keep the kids alive, keep them breathing for two hours, please. Then we're good to go. Okay, so then the other mindset shift that I know even now, okay, causes me to want to stay later, work more hours, is that I've got to get this done. So I'll be working on something and I'm like, I just need to get this finished, right? And getting this finished could mean that that requires me to actually pull in another three to four hours. 
and I have to stop myself, okay? Now, here's the thing about me, you guys. I love what I do. Literally, this is like my getaway sometimes. Uh, when I come to my office, it is, it's, it's like my happy place, and so I love to work. So I, even myself, I have to cut myself off because I have other things I have to do. I have a family, you know, who's going to cook dinner, you know, the dog's got to be taken outside, you know, we've got tennis practice, um, Nova, our seven yard, she started playing tennis and she loves it. And so, you know, but there's so much other things that go on. And so I do have to cut Ashley off. Okay. I have to say, Ashley, this is it for the day. You've got to cut it off. It's, you know, and we got to continue this tomorrow. So a tip that just popped in my head, I'm going to give to you. This is a bonus tip that wasn't in my notes is do not set like a project or something that's going to take a long time at the end of your day. Because what's going to happen is that you're going to feel compelled to want to keep going and not stop. Okay. And sometimes we're working on projects and just things that we're trying to get done that just, it's just going to take some time anyway. Like it's not going to get done today anyway. Right. So you really do have to train your mind to say, okay, this is my cutoff time. And this is when I'm going to stop. But I do want to break down the reality of things. Like I really, you know, I want you to know that I get it. And I want you to know that I too struggle with, you know, feeling like, okay, um, I, I need to work, but I also need to be here for my family. You know, so I think it's just, it's, a, it's an ongoing um, renewing of the mind that you do have to do daily to renew your mind to the fact that, um, I can't overwork, that that's not the lifestyle I'm trying to live. That's not what I'm trying to teach to my daughter. I don't want her to learn this because I feel like that we learned this from our, you know, the generations before us. And I, I don't want her to, to do that. Right. And so, um, and so, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, these things are true that, you know, we're, we're running into these situations. We're in a rock and a hard place. But what I'm going to tell you is that if you fail to plan, then you are planning to live that type of a lifestyle. And so what I want you to do is I want you to speak life on your business. I want you to speak life on wanting to be able to not overwork yourself, to be able to work that four hour, I mean, that four day a week or off on whatever that looks like to you, because it's going to look like, you know, different for everybody. But I want you to speak life on that. And I will say this. It is something that you have to learn. So just as we have learned to overwork, we're going to have to unlearn um, overworking and we're going to have to learn more balance and more structure and um, doing things more decently and in order. Okay, really quick, you guys, because I completely forgot to mention one of my main tools that really helped me monitor my work-life balance is a tool called Toggle Track. Um, I use the free version, and so I'm going to just recommend for you to use that as well because that's what works for me. They do help for subscriptions, but anyway, I use the free version. So right now, you are seeing me track my time, and this really, honestly, y'all, this helps me so much in understanding and keeping up with what I am doing, where I'm focusing my attention to, and I actually use this when I run my center. So as you can see right now, what I'm doing is I'm actually tracking the fact that I'm recording this video right here. And so what you do is you come in and whenever you're going to start something, you go ahead and put in what you're doing and hit the start. And then when you're done, you'll hit the stop. And what it's going to do is going to actually um, enter your time. So as you can see, this is my entire week that I've had so far. But the cool thing about this is that this is going to allow you to use data to be able to see what you're really doing. A lot of times, a lot of owners, and I have done this so many times where I have actually done a audit review and I'll tell them, I'll say, I need this. And you're spending a lot of time just on stuff that doesn't really matter, but you'll be able to pull up a report. And again, you're going to be able to see exactly how much percentage of time you're spending in one area. And this is going to be a game changer. So right now, um, of course, I will not work tomorrow. So right now I am actually in it about 18 hours and 12 minutes and something. Um, last week, if we go to my last week, I actually worked about 22 hours, um, nine minutes and 10 seconds. And so again, this is just going to help you so much because if you are spending your time in areas that you do not need to be spending your time in, you're going to be able to see that. And it's really hard to see that 
when you don't have something like this. So I would highly recommend you using this. I know it is something that's really hard to do at first. You will have to train yourself to do it, but I still do this to this day. And this really helps me to use data to really manage my work-life balance. So I wanted to hop that. So I completely forgot to mention that on the video, but I wanted to hop that in. So let's go right back into the video. Okay, now I really hope that you enjoyed coming back behind my screen and me showing you my uh, my work report and things like that from the week. So if you did, then I would like to invite you to go ahead and like this video if you have yet to do that, you guys. Please like this video, okay? Because that just helps me out. It's literally like putting a little penny in my hat. Um, so if you can do that, that would be amazing. If you have yet to subscribe to the channel, be sure that you do that. Go ahead and hit that little subscribe. Hit the little bell also that you're notified of when I post up videos. And let's go ahead and get right back into this chat. Okay, so how do I actually plan and execute a 22-hour work week, okay? So the very first thing that I do is I go to my calendar and I put boundaries and perimeters in my calendar, okay? So what that looks like for me is, and what it is, I'm setting my non-negotiables. There's non-negotiables that I'm going to set with my calendar. So one of my non-negotiables is that I do not take any more appointments after 4 o'clock, okay? Um, so that is a non-negotiable for me. My other non-negotiable is that um, I do not take any calls on um, certain days of the week. So typically, I like to do all of my calls with clients or if I'm going to be talking to somebody, I'll do that on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And then Mondays and Wednesdays are my days to do this, to be able to do my video recordings or things like that. So when I ran my child care business, um, it was a little bit different and I will get into what that looks like here in a few minutes. But really setting those parameters in your calendar and um, you can actually do that in a calendar. So I know like with my office um, Outlook calendar, I can go in and set these non-negotiables um, or set boundaries or limits within my calendar so that it will not let me book anything or put anything there. So that is me stopping myself, okay? That's me stopping myself because I don't trust myself. I know, you know, I I have, you know, these ideas for the day and I'm thinking, oh, I could I could do all these things, but I don't I don't trust myself to um, set those boundaries just manually. So I like to, that's a form of automation. I like to set that up in my calendar and then that kind of stops me from, you know, putting too much on there. And so with that being said, what I actually like to put on there very first is any personal things that I have going on. So this is a really good example of making sure that you're planning your child care business needs around your personal needs. So um, any kind of tennis practice for Nova, doctor's appointments, any vacations, or um, last week they had a, um, a field trip. So, you know, I was able to go to her field trip. It was all day. We were there from 9 to 2. Uh, we actually went to the Lost River Cave. So if you guys follow me in stories, you got to come along with us. And if you don't follow me over on Instagram, then be sure that you do because um, I do share behind the scenes of everything that I have going on for the day, typically throughout the week. But anyway, that was so much fun. But yeah, so I'll put things like that in there. Um, so anything personal will go in there first, okay? And then, um, and then once I do that, then I go in and add my cutoff times, okay? So again, um, typically, like I said, I do not like, like to take any more calls after 4 o'clock. I used to have it where I would do my calls before I would have to leave to go pick up Nova. I found that that did not work. So now what I do is I'll go pick her up, come back, and I'll take one more call after that. Um, and I'm okay with that. But even things like that will come up where you'll put things in place and then you'll find out, oh, I don't think I like that or that's not working for me. Or sometimes I could even go by season. So, you know, um, certain times of the year that, you know, one thing may work and then other times of the year it may not. But that basically is what you want to do. You want to really set your cutoff times and really put those in there. And then what I do is I take my to-do list, okay? So now I've got this long to-do list. And what I'll do is I will find a home on my calendar for that thing for me to do. And when you do this, this really helps to, um, it gives you that mental space, you know, because so that you're not overwhelmed about your to-do list, but you know that things are going to get taken care of because you're placing things and you're, you are assigning a time and day for that to-do list. Now, another thing that really works well for me, and this is what I actually did at my center, is I have what I call theme days, okay? So 
For my center, I would have a day for accounting that usually was on a Monday. Um, I would have a day for anything curriculum wise. I would have a, a team care or client day where that day I would focus on anything that my team needs, whether it's planning for a staff meeting or, you know, whether there's any kind of issues that have popped up during the week. I would have that on my team care and client day. Marketing, I would have a day you know, specifically designed for marketing where I focus on what we need to do there. Um, any kind of administrative stuff, I would have a day set aside for that. So if I'm having to, you know, do anything with the food program or whatever, I would have days set aside for specific things. Now, what this does is that this allows you to have that brain space and to have that freedom to be able to work on one thing at a time. So what happens is that when we kind of try to do a lot of different things in different types of um, task areas in one day, our brain has to switch from here to there and it's really hard to focus. And so I have learned if I have a theme day, I can focus on that and then I am good to go. So like today right now is, is a Thursday and I'm recording a video. I do have some calls, but it's kind of all in that same bracket because I'm going to be talking all day long. Um, so that really has helped me tremendously is setting aside theme days. And at my center, and um, I would also let my staff know. So like they would kind of know, or at least my assistant director would know what my theme days were. So she would know if a staff member came to her and said, you know, we need X, Y, and Z. She would be able to go back and let them know, hey, she does not do things for team care or client care until Wednesday. So I'm going to write her notes or whatever on the board here and she'll see that. Speaking of the board, you guys, um, one of my favorite things that I use is Monday.com. Now, this was not around when I ran my center, but it was around when um, or it is around now. And it's something that I teach to all my clients to have. So when I talk about putting something on the board, this is what I'm talking about is being able to go here, you know, the um, my director, whatnot could write on there. And then that would go into my task list to add to something that I need to focus on when I do my team care and my client care. Now, the very last thing that I'm also going to give you in regards to a tip is block scheduling. So block scheduling basically looks like this, um, where you are going to block out time. Typically, it's going to be usually three to four hours for each task, and you're gonna block schedule. So I did, I used to do that a lot with the center, um, because sometimes there is a lot of stuff that I feel like I need to do, and that did work for me. So what that might look like is that if I do wanna not have, if I do wanna combine a theme day where I'm like maybe one um, part of the day I'm working on accounting, and the other part of the day I'm working on marketing for the center, then I would say, okay, in the morning I'm gonna work on accounting, so I would block schedule that out. I would probably put about four hours towards accounting, and then I'll take a break, and then I'll come back, and the afternoon I might put like three hours for marketing. And so that is a really good way to help. And so basically what you do when you do block scheduling is you want to pick an AM activity or a task that you're gonna work on and a PM task or activity that you're gonna work on. So that is really helpful. It's in, um, I don't really do that a lot today. If, we're, if I'm doing a lot of projects, like if I'm getting ready to do something big, I'll do that. But a lot of times what works best for me is just literally just having those theme days. Now, if I'm doing a really big project, so like let's say that you're doing a really big event, community event or something like that, then, then I will actually plan a week or two weeks to be able to focus on that one thing. That would be definitely some tips on how I plan and execute and really just kind of put all these things together so that I am not overworking myself. And going back to that calendar, you guys, Friday is off. It is blocked. Nobody can book me on a Friday, N nothing. So, and uh, what I what do I do on a Friday, you guys? Oh my goodness, so usually, so like tomorrow, <laughs> I am going to sit on my couch and I'm going to catch up on my TV shows that I love to watch, you guys. Um, I am a big reality fanatic, so I do love some reality TV show. Um, right now, Married at First Sight is one of the ones I'm loving. And yes, you guys, my guilty pleasure, I do like some Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> um, but I just like to be able to watch TV that just allows me to escape and that helps me. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Some other days, um, I will go out, I'll go shopping. Um, when it's pretty outside, I'll be planting, you know, my little flowers and things like that. Um, also, my mom, who just called, um, I we go out for breakfast. So, I think I know we're probably going to do that. We went to Cracker Barrel 
a few weeks before and loved it. So anyway, you guys, that is, um, that's what I do. And as I start to wrap up this video, I just really want this to be inspiration to you that you can do the same thing. It's just going to take, a, it's going to take some planning. It's going to take some little bit of your mindset kind of shifting. It's going to take some um, things that's going to be running in the background of your business. So there are things that have to be set up, but I just want you to know that it is possible. And for it to be possible, yes, I'm aware that you're going to have to have the support. You are going to have to have the team that you're going to need. You're going to have to have the people supporting you to be able to do that. And so in the last video, I actually talked about the levels of automation and I related it to the amount of hours that you want to work. So be sure to go back and watch that video because I really feel like it's going to really tie into what I'm talking about today. And then coming up, you guys, I know you guys have been asking about could I do some trainings or video topics on staff and how to train and things like that? So stay tuned because I have something really, really special for you that I am working up. I'm going to dive into what does that look like to actually get the support that you need? How do you hire on the right people? How do you onboard? What's the training process like? We're going to talk about that and we're going to dive into that in the next upcoming video. I'm not for sure if if it will be the next next one but just stay tuned is what i'm saying so with that being said if you have not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit the little bell so that you're notified of when that video comes out where i am going to be talking about your support and how you're going to get that and also be sure if you have not done so to like this video so what i want to know is where are you with your work-life balance what are you struggling with what are some things that you would love to change um, with your with your work life balance and working running your child care business, how many hours are you working? That would be a really good question to to answer down below. So let's continue the conversation, you guys. Um, I will say that I actually so whenever you, I do these videos, um, I used to do it this way, but I'm doing it now. But I actually watch comments from my phone. So if you comment back, I will be right here and we'll just continue to have the conversation about this but i just really hope again that this has inspired you um to just keep pushing okay but let's keep pushing in the right direction let's not just keep pushing and not getting anywhere okay because there's a difference we can be pushing but where are you going and how is that working for you and are you getting anywhere and also with that being said if you are pushing and you're like ashley i need some help on this honey I know what you're saying. I've tried this. I've tried that. It's not working. Um, please know that I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting in my high-touch consulting program where we can sit down together and I can really help you outline a work-life balance schedule, help you be able to put the people in place and the automations in place that's going to work for you and really be able to just kind of help you plan this out and help you actually execute that. So um, there's going to be a link down below in the description box. That will show you how you can book a one-on-one -on -one complimentary discovery call with me, um, and uh, which is I'm actually doing one here in a few minutes, so that's why I better hop off this video. But how you can actually get on my calendar, and we can sit down and further discuss, and obviously discuss what working together looks like. So, okay, you guys. Speaking of that, I have got to go. Um, again, thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one, and please make sure that you're taking some time out for yourself. Okay. All right. Bye, guys.